saying goodbye to us and it's departing leaving us the blessings and mercies of this may Allah give us mercy so we can get them ongoing there are many people who in the previous year were present with us but in this Ramadan they are not with us from the there's a meaning of a hadith that we learn that in the barzakh when the souls when they see people doing good deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has those times those moments those things that Allah has given to them and from those events in the dunya from those events that took place those people are taking benefit, those who are alive in the world. So those who are in the barzakh, the souls, after passing away, then they're envious of those people. And they say that how fortunate are those people that they are present in the world, they're living, and those opportunities that Allah has given them, they're taking advantage. So if only we could be in their place they're saying so that we could also practice more they say and from our eyes the darajat the rank that was hidden the treasures that were hidden and by practicing on those we would also like that we could go and practice those deeds and today more and more we could be benefiting from those na'mas and wards my brothers this is not a traditional uh, point that I'm discussing with you. Rather, in reality, with the pain of the heart, I've just said this to you. Not traditionally, just for the sake of it. Because we hear these things and we say these things, that this is the month of Rahma. It's a great month. And it's a lot of ni'mas and treasures in this month. But even then we are human beings. And we get stuck in laziness and ghaflat. In reality, we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do this. It's a very famous hadith, and we hear this regularly from the respected scholars, ulama. But according to this opportunity now, it fits. And I'd like to read this hadith again with you. Because this is our final majlis of Ramadan. After this, if Allah gives to us in our destiny or not, he knows. And this is not some minor small scale majlis. This is the gathering of Allah's dhikr, Allah's remembrance. Hazrat radiallahu anhu, he narrated this hadith with regards to this majlis that on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of Hashar, all of the people of the world, when they will be gathered, because obviously the plane of resurrection, it's obvious. That from the beginning until the end of time, the people will be gathered. Imagine the crowd, imagine the vast masses of people. And that one piece of earth, Allah will collect everybody and gather one. No parda. Everyone will be gathered there together. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an angel will come on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will announce this angel. It's voice and announcement will be so great. The angel, that every man 
in such a big gathering of all of mankind very clearly and crystal clear will hear his call why because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's objective was for everybody to hear so allah will give to the angel so much power and energy that his his voice will reach to every person and he will announce this angel that oh people that who are you those people from amongst you who who used to in terms of we have the two opposites and we have ease comfort and pain difficulty either we have good opportunities or there are times of difficulty yes it could be physical difficulty it could be a mental difficulty it could be any type of difficulty that person confronts and the ease and comfort in the dunya is the opposite eating drinking allah has given you everything and that's ease and comfort luxury so a person human being goes through through these two phases in life so the angel will announce the o people that were in this condition either you were in goodness and happiness and comfort and luxury or your condition was difficult in both conditions those people who did the dhikr of allah continue to remember allah whether they didn't stop when they had pain or difficulty or hardships or barriers extreme difficulties nor did they stop doing dhikr of allah when they were happy and well being with very few people remember allah when they in the good times maybe during the bad times we remember allah but in good times we forget allah regularly so to remind this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gives pain a bit of difficulty so that his servant turns back to him and he focuses and requests from allah this is all also allah's rahma mercy when he gives difficulty to someone when you see another points coming between him that when we see that we are got a difficulty or a problem or distress and after that distress alhamdulillah we are turning to allah running back to allah then consider that difficulty was allah's rahma mercy was allah's objective of giving you difficulty hardship was that we turn back to him we remember him and if after the hardship the distress the servant goes further away from allah and he and he distances him, himself from allah then consider it was allah's azza punishment that allah is pulling him towards hell So the angel announces on the day of judgment uh, where are those people in who used to live in the world he will speak to all of mankind whether they had pain difficulty they never forgot allah and they continue to do dhikr of allah remembrance of allah so then the big group of people will stand at that time on the day of judgment they will resurrect that big group of people may allah allow us to be included amongst those people then it will be announced to that group of people that what a great announcement it will be the go you people go into paradise and without hisab without reckoning go into paradise so today a little bit of effort my friends on this world while we're alive let's strengthen ourselves and make ourselves habitual in doing dhikr of allah you will go into paradise without reckoning without hisab without any accounts being scrutinized you did this you did this why did you be stood at the door and that they will be welcomed at the door parties ah we know you and even now at that time people will be stuck in their accounts on the day of resurrection in a bad state sweating distressed the how many stages they have to go through the bridge of sirat from here from there questioning accounts but this group of people select will stand and with full protocol they'll be welcomed into paradise without reckoning so this is the gathering of the dhikr of allah then it will be announced again that those people those people who who in buying and selling in their business transactions because this is a part of our life you know that we are busy when we say we're busy running the shop running your business running your enterprise you're busy in buying selling trade activities part of life we have to do this we have to live in the world so it'll be announced again second announcement that those people who were busy in the world in the dunya their business they were occupied with their business their trade they used to work they used to go to the office used to drive a taxi used to run a business trade used to study whatever their occupations of the world are things that keep us busy they were occupied in the world but despite them being busy even then even then they went lazy from the dhikr of allah the remembrance of allah subhanallah the people will listen then that second group of people will get up yeah second question they'll answer 
Then they will stand, a whole group of people. Alhamdulillah. When that group stands, they'll also be given the good news that you also go into paradise without reckoning, without hisab, without the accounts. So two groups. Then it will be announced again, third time. Say subhanallah. This is the importance of dhikr, remembrance of Allah that we learn from this hadith. Because tomorrow, we will also be stood on the plane of resurrection. may not be that we're sad that day. Oh, why did I waste my time on the earth while I was living? At least I should have done dhikr of Allah. In the earth, subhanAllah, so the third announcement, that in the night, when all people were sleeping, relaxing, and they were lying down on their mattresses, who were those people who would stand and remember a line the night, whose backs would not stay attached to their beds, rather their timings, they would follow the schedule. How many hours I will sleep, then I will wake up, then this many hours I'll do dhikr of Allah, I'll do remembrance of Allah. Those who fix their schedules, their program, they rested as well, they used to sleep as well, but... They had fikr concern. Oh, I don't want to forget Allah. I need to remember Allah. So is there anyone in this gathering in the day of resurrection will be called? Then another group of people will stand as well on that day. Because no false person can stand. No one can trick Allah on that day. No one can lie. There will be the pure, clean people. So they will stand the third group. Then it will be announced to them from Allah Ta'ala. On behalf of Allah, go you also. You all people who have stood now. To respond to this question without any hisab and reckoning, go into paradise. How great a result, my friends. So this is the result of dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah. Allah has given us some tasks to do in this world while we're living. What Allah has explained to us is that you have dunya, you have the world, business, difficulties, distress, sorrows, you have to travel, you have to meet and greet people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything He tells us, it is possible for the human being to do. Just you have to control yourself and pull yourself together. Just have to pull yourself together. Control yourself. You know these things that a human being gets? These things, Allah has prepared the resources and the solutions for the human being. And you can get the good things via good company. Yes, when good company... You go to good company, then it pulls you towards the good actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He creates such good company, influence people. For example, we sat in Ramadan, and quite a lot of people are sitting. You know that they don't normally sit away from Ramadan. So this is sobat company. When you go to good company, then it revives the passion and the desire in that person. Allah instills that. He says, okay, I'm sat down now. Then the second time Allah pulls that person again to the gathering. Then Allah brings that person again. So in this way, it develops, it develops, increases, that the human being gets regular and used to it. And those actions that the Prophet ﷺ announced that are good, it's not hard for him after that. So the first step or two is a bit difficult. So always when... You or me, whenever we hear a hadith or we have a desire, the awus, I want to do dhikr of Allah, then there's a very simple method to do this. That look for some good company. Look for some people. Look for a group where this action is already being done, dhikr of Allah is being done. Just go there and relax and sit down. Just do this much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching everything he knows about his servant from where to where I have to take my servant. Today when you sit, it will become such an action, such a great reward in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without his sub reckoning Allah will allow you to go into paradise. Why? Because the people in their life, they took advantage of that opportunity. Not this, that they had to stop working, shut down their businesses. No, but they controlled themselves. Made a program, made a schedule, made a timetable. This is a good action. It will benefit me in the hereafter, so I should work and make some effort for this action. So my friends, think about this. Okay, so the point that I was sharing with you, in the beginning there was another hadith came, in this gathering with regards to this assembly and gathering, that we are in Ramadan. Allah Ta'ala has given us Ramadan. And Ramadan is departing. It is leaving us. And it's a great reality is Ramadan. So tell me, if we waste this Ramadan, then is there anything bigger loss than that in our life? Than losing out from Ramadan? Is there a bigger loss for the hereafter than a person who doesn't take from Ramadan? Because we don't know. That will we get Ramadan next year? And such a great reward will I get again next year? As a human being, so think about this for a few moments. Think about this. Allah's Nabi, this hadith that you hear regularly, and I'll read this hadith again. So that we can have taqwa, these four or five days that are remaining. If we couldn't do it before today, then let's do the action now. 
That's the objective. That if we've lost out, we've been lazy, we've delayed, then let's do it now. Because there's no point regretting after Ramadan. It won't be a minor regret. It will be a massive, massive regret. A massive loss we will incur. That you will hear the hadith and you will understand yourself what it is lost. If we haven't done this action in Ramadan already, we've done everything in Ramadan already, yes. But if we haven't done this specific action in Ramadan, that you will hear from this hadith, then what will be the condition of the human being? What is that action? Now let's pay attention and focus. That until now, until now today in Ramadan, we are very close to um, that you maybe you've completed your Quran, you've done all other actions, the 27th and I will come. All things are very close. Allah Ta'ala has, Allah's put this hadith in my mind, definitely take benefit from this point. If you haven't done this action already, then immediately do this, otherwise Ramadan 100% has been wasted. Remember this what I'm saying. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will tell us. We should hear those words. We only want to hear those things that benefit our desires. I've done this action. I've already done this in Ramadan. I've done this worship. I've done this action. I've done this. No. Don't follow what we desire. If we haven't done the action, if we've done all other things, Alhamdulillah, but if we haven't done this specific action, remember, then this Ramadan totally has been wasted. And cross. Cross on Ramadan. Finished. And what is that? Ajeeb, unique way this message is coming to us. It's a Friday, like tomorrow will be Juma. It was a Friday, the Holy Prophet ﷺ was in the masjid. He came to the masjid, and I'm telling you this hadith here. He came into the masjid according to his habit. He came, the whole, the sahaba were ready for prayer. On the first step on the member, Sharif, the Prophet ﷺ put his blessed feet, and he put his feet on the first step, and after putting his foot, he said, Ameen, loudly. He didn't say it quietly, he said it so loudly, the whole gathering of the Sahaba heard that, Ameen. The Sahaba thought, huh? The Prophet ﷺ said, Ameen, but he didn't say a dua before saying Ameen. So maybe uh, we didn't understand what's going on. Then the second step, the Prophet ﷺ took on the member. Then again he said with his blessed voice, Ameen, clearly. Then everyone, the Sahaba heard this, but there was no dua before the Amin, no action. So, but Amin is being said, Amin. Then the Prophet ﷺ took the third step on the noble member. You know, like you go up the member before sitting. Then the Prophet ﷺ took the third step on the member, and he ﷺ said, Amin. The Sahaba, noble companions, requested. O oh, Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have done this action which is not really according to your habit. Out of sequence, please uh, give us, uh, with your mercy, please explain to us that you didn't do any dua, you didn't resign any supplication, you didn't do any action, but you were saying Ameen. So what was this Ameen you were saying? For which reason did you say Ameen? Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated in response that how important this message is for us. And... He said that Jibreel just came to me from Allah. Who sent him? Who sent Jibreel? Alayhi salam? Allah sent him. And Allah sent Jibreel. Alayhi salam. And who did he send him to? To the Holy Prophet. So three, three involved in this hadith Allah, the angel Jibreel, and the head of the Prophet Muhammad. There are three included in giving this message to us. So what happened then? So Allah sent Jibreel, and Jibreel said to me, he said, the Prophet says, he did a dua, he did a prayer. And he said, say Ameen on this dua. So stamp and seal this dua. Imagine that, can this dua be rejected? This prayer, that, can this dua of the Prophet ﷺ be rejected? That Allah says, I want this, and Jibreel brings the dua, and the Prophet ﷺ says, Ameen, I don't think there's any greater and more solid dua than this in the universe. How solid is this dua? So what was this dua? So listen now, we have to hear this dua. This is the dua to listen to. The Prophet ﷺ said that whoever has come into Ramadan, like we have come into Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever has come into Ramadan, attained Ramadan, we are sad, prayed salat, tasbih, dhikr, everything we're doing, Alhamdulillah, we're doing dhikr, remembrance of all, everything. Whoever has come into Ramadan and has attained Ramadan, but after coming into Ramadan, in this Ramadan, in the 30 days 
until you don't see the new moon at the end of the month. In the 30 days of Ramadan, if he did not earn his forgiveness, then, then the dua starts. That person is, he is a failure in this world and the hereafter. He is wretched in this world and the hereafter and he is destroyed. So the, when the Prophet ﷺ said, when Jibreel ﷺ said this, I said, Ameen. Now you think, let's us think. We think, the whole Ramadan has been sealed in this dua of the Prophet ﷺ. The whole Ramadan has been sealed in this dua. That whatever you have done, very good, very nice what you've done Ramadan, the amal, the actions, the worship, excellent actions, good, but... We need to question ourselves now, me, you, there are a few days left that have I, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have I made Allah ta'ala grant me forgiveness? Question mark. Question mark. Think about it. Ponder over this. If, may Allah not allow this, that if we have not earned our forgiveness, we've done all of the actions in Ramadan, and heavy actions, they're all on one side. But Allah's and His Rasul and Jibreel Aysam's dua is on the other side because they have told us that the importance of Ramadan is this for sure. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is the reality of Ramadan. The importance of Ramadan in reality is in this dua, in no other action. If you've done this action, then all your other deeds are fine and are in order. If you haven't done this action, then you are wretched, you are cursed, and you are destroyed in this world and the hereafter. Allahu Akbar Kabira. Allahu Akbar Kabira. Tell me. Tell me. Women, folks, sisters, men, brothers, wherever people are in the world. Have we done this action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us forgiveness? Have we done this in Ramadan? Maghfirah. How will we get maghfirah? Forgiveness. If we haven't done the action, if we haven't done anything, then how will the forgiveness come? Automatically will it come? Subhanallah. How? Have we ever sat down and thought about the forgiveness that Allah's Prophet ﷺ has mentioned, Allah's forgiveness, such a great statement. The world can go upside down, but whatever Rasulullah ﷺ has said, that is exactly what will happen. That's exactly what will happen, to the point. The value of Ramadan is this indeed. The value of Ramadan in the hereafter is this statement of the Prophet ﷺ. That whoever stands with Ramadan, he will be told that have you got the certificate that you earned forgiveness? Did Allah grant you forgiveness? Yes or no in Ramadan? Where's your certificate? You understand my brothers, the way I'm explaining it? So let's come and ask ourselves now about maqfirah. Yeah, okay? Do you want to get Allah's forgiveness? Do you want Allah to grant you forgiveness? Yes or no? Yes, the rest is up to you. But I'm just explaining to you and explaining this hadith. Yes? Yes, oh yes, I got forgiveness because I prayed salah. This is not the way to get Allah's forgiveness. Oh, I got forgiveness because I read Quran. This ain't the method to get Allah's forgiveness. Why? Because every action, attached to every action, attached to every action, Allah Ta'ala has put a result. Allah has put a result. If you pray salah, then you will get servanthood. Servanthood. Yes, so what does Salah give? It gives you servanthood. So servanthood, if someone says become a servant, you pray Salah, then you'll get servanthood of Allah. If you keep the fast, then you will crush the desires. You, If you want to break your desires, what makes you do that? The fast does that. Without fasting, you can't break the desires. So for every action, Allah has given a quality, a, a, a result. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you'll pray Salah, you'll get servanthood. In other words, if you want to be a servant of Allah, then pray Salah. If you want to break your desires, your nafs, how will you break your desires, your nafs? Which action? Praying salah won't break the desires. By fasting, you will crush your nafs, your desires. By fasting. You understand what I'm saying? So if we want to crush our nafs, then keep the fast. You keep the fast, you will break the desires. You will control the desires. If you pay zakat, then you will get rid of love of wealth. Allah has given deeds. Allah has given deeds. This is the feeding, the emotion. When a person with his heart on time gives zakat, automatically he will come out of the trap of love of wealth and money. So Allah has given an action that if we want servanthood, then pray salah regularly and you will enter into the servanthood of Allah. Salah. Salah gives that effect. Allah, you'll be a servant, a good man, a slave of Allah. You then have to pray salah regularly to be a slave of Allah.
servant of Allah. If you want to, if I want to break my nafs and desires, then start to keep the fasts. If you want to uh, get rid of the love of wealth and money, then go towards zakat and charity and open your treasure chest, open your safe, your safe. And that amal, that action will give you that result. You understand what I'm saying? I'll give an example here. If you want to work hard in life, mujahidat in the path of Allah, then what should you do? Then start doing hajj. Hajj. When hajj, then the emotions of hard work, effort, struggle will come into you. You understand what I'm saying? So if you want to... Now we come to the point of me and you. If we want to earn Allah's forgiveness, then what is the action to get Allah's forgiveness? You understand now the example? For servanthood, slavery, salah, to break the desires fast, okay? To get rid of the wealth, love of wealth, pay zakat, charity. And for mujahida, to make effort, then to do a, a mujahid, then Allah's path, do hajj. Hajj, then tell me. After that, to get Allah's forgiveness, what's the action Allah's given? What's the action to get Allah's forgiveness for maghfirah? Is tawbah, repentance. When, until a person doesn't do tawbah, he cannot earn Allah's forgiveness. Maghfirah. You don't understand what I'm saying? Yes. Ya ayyuladina amanu tubu alayhi wa tawbata nasuha. Allah says, oh you who believe. If you don't do tawbah, if you don't repent, automatically Allah will not give to you to, as a servant. Yes, the breaking the desires, you won't get that automatically. You can't do mujahidah automatically. You have to do an action first, then you get the result. You understand what, you with me? If you do an amal, then the result comes. If you do an action, then the result comes. So if you want servanthood, slavery, then pray salah. If you want to break your desires, nafs, then go into the action of fasting. Yes, subhanAllah. If you want to extract the love of money and wealth out of your heart, then come towards zakat, sadaqat, charity. You understand what I'm saying? If you want that Allah makes you strong and bold and you have no worries in the path of Allah, then what should you do? Do hajj and umrah, the journey, the struggle. And if you, me, if we want Allah's forgiveness, maghfirah, then what should we do? Tawbah, repentance. Tawbah, repentance. How should we do tawbah? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Allah with the love is saying, Oh my sinful servants, if you make a mistake, no problem. Allah is saying this in the Quran. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Allah is calling us, addressing us with love, with tenderness, not sternly. Who? Those people are dirty. We are immersed in the sins. We are full of stench and smell of sins. But Allah loves us so much that you are still my believers though. You are still my believers, Allah addresses us. The, the women and the men who believe me, Allah says, no problem, you made a mistake, you sinned. Ya ayyuladina amnu, tubu ilallahi. Come towards me, Allah says. Allah is inviting us. Look at the style of how Allah is calling us. We stand there stubbornly, arrogantly. Oh, it's alright, Allah will forgive me one day, I don't need to do anything. Yes? Look, you've heard the hadith. Don't make a fuss in Ramadan. You'll be destroyed in Ramadan if you make a fast. You'll be wretched and cursed. You will lose out in this world and the hereafter. You'll be a failure. For the sake of Allah in this Ramadan, understand this Ramadan, this amal, this action. Ya ayyuladina manu tubu ila Allah. Allah says in the Quran, Come, come, oh you my servant, my slave, come to me. How Allah loves us and how Allah is beloved to us. Why are you ashamed of your sins, Allah says? Are you not tired of sinning, sinning, sinning for one whole year? Okay, 40 years you sinned. At least today in Ramadan, I've told you this news, Allah is saying. This fact, today at least pull yourself together and improve. Will I say anything to you? I won't say anything to you. Allah says, I won't complain on the day of judgment when you come. I'll put veils and curtains between you and your sins. I won't make you ashamed in front of other people, Allah says, of your sins. How Allah's karam and grace, Allah is so merciful on us. Imagine, we can't even imagine. Allah's karam, Allah's mercy beyond mercy. Allah has given us Ramadan and deen. Allah has given us awareness, such an environment. Allah explains things to us and they come into our heart. Subhanallah, say subhanallah. Allah has absorbed them, allowed them to absorb into our heart. And big warning Allah has given to us. The Holy Prophet Islam, he's given us a, a dua and he said, Ameen, Jibreel gave us the facts and Allah Ta'ala instructed the message to be given in the Masjid Nabi on the day of Juma. When normally in a Juma, Allah Ta'ala said on a normal Friday, there are such moments, there's such a day, that in this day Allah has put such an hour, that there's a dua that's definitely accepted 
during a, a, an hour in, in Juma. But this was the blessed tongue of the Holy Prophet Wasallam. that his dua is not dependent on Juma. His dua is not dependent on any Friday. Allah said, and he said it, and the dua is accepted. That's it, from his blessed tongue, these words emanated, this dua. So Tawbah, Maghfirah, forgiveness will take place when you do Tawbah, when you repent, Allah is inviting you, come, Ya ayyu aladheena manu tubu ila Allah. Come to me, Allah says. And then Allah says, Tawbah, if you want to do Tawbah, repent, then Allah is explaining the method. Tubu ila Allah, come to me, I'll explain to you, Tawbah tan nasuha, you must do Tawbah tan nasuha. So what's the difference between Tawbah and Tawbah and Nusuha? Take a tasbih, Tawbah, 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 Astaghfirullah, 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 watching TV, talking, talking, Tawbah, Tawbah, Astaghfirullah, Allah, forgive me, Allah, forgive me, Tawbah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. How many? hundred times, Tawbah, 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 this is a wazifa, it's a good wazifa. Good practice, just a practice. But you can't get istighfar and repentance from this, say subhanAllah. You can't get forgiveness due to this action. We think, I've done tasbih, astaghfirullah, 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 a hundred times. No, my brothers. Tawbatan nasuha, Allah says you must do. Tawbatan nasuha. That from your tongue you can't do tawbah. Allah says you can't do tawbah from your tongue. You can't repent. This is just repetition. Repetition, your thoughts are going, astaghfirullah, 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 thinking, okay, a thousand tasbih, very good action, reciting astaghfirullah, there are a lot of virtues in astaghfirullah, a lot of rewards, but forgiveness won't be granted on this. You, we want maghfirah, we want forgiveness. Say subhanallah. Subhanallah. You understand the point I'm making? So these are the final moments and days, it's the last night of Juma tonight of Ramadan. Listen carefully, listen carefully, think, Ponda, otherwise, what's the punishment? Wretched person he will be. Allah, Akbar, imagine. And he will be cursed, destroyed. Nothing can save that person from Allah. Remember that. Allah is shadidu liqab. Whatever he wants, when he says something, no one can save that person. No one in this universe can be saved from Allah. Yes, if Allah sends azab on a kaum people, no one can be saved. Loot, the people of Loot, nobody could save them when azab came. All technology, advancement, progress, everything will leave us. No order can come in between Allah's order. When Allah's azab comes down, Allah shakes the earth, then everyone falls, the houses, buildings, technology, signs, everything evaporates into thin air. When Allah throws the fire from above, everything is wiped away and burnt. That we have made with our hands, we've got our pillars and lampposts, this is for this, and tanners for this, nothing at all is, Allah wipes everything away, destroys everything. And all the fussiness and criticism and jokes and jest and mocking, Allah says, and every event in the Quran, I've told you in detail, Allah says, that don't fall into a false pretense. Yes, that Allah says, I own Philistine as well. I control Philistine, I control Baytul Masjid Al-Aqsa, I'm the owner of those Muslims as well. What you're seeing, the changes, these are signs, Bayanat, to explain to you, to make you learn that today you're like this and tomorrow you could also be like this. There's one standard you should have in life, one. You are the slave, you are successful only, only that human being is successful, only that worshiper is successful, only that Zahid is person is a Zahid, only that person is pious. Who? Who? Pleases his Rabb, his Lord continuously. That's it. Yes, that person who continues to please his Rabb, and how is Allah pleased? Not through prostration, not through Hajj, not through Umrah, not through his recitation of Quran, not through Tilawat, not through Dhikrullah. Ya ayyu ladina amunu tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasuha, Allah says. With beautiful love Allah has addressed, nowhere else has Allah addressed the Muslims and sinful Muslims Allah addressing. Allah says, the most beloved servant to me is he, he keeps on sinning, 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 he keeps on sinning. Allah says, I like that person, Allah says. If he keeps, if he doesn't sin, Allah says, I'll wipe them away, why don't you sin? Then I'll bring another nation who I want them people to sin. SubhanAllah, say SubhanAllah. This is Allah Ta'ala's choice, Allah says, I like it. You keep on sinning, 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 but... At the end of that, what do I like? That suddenly you think, this is my Lord, my Creator. Suddenly He submits, He bows. Allah says, I'm very happy with that person, so happy with that person, so happy with that person. I'll give you an example. That just like in the desert, in the wilderness, there's a person, he's traveling, and he has a camel, and he has his goods, his luggage on the camel, and for a little while he sleeps, and he wakes up and the camel disappears. Allah's given an example of Allah's happiness here, in this hadith. Oh, he goes, oh, my camel's gone, my goods. He sat there in a bad way. He He's thirsty, dry, he has to travel, his camel's gone, goods, luggage, food, water, gone. Imagine, 
Yes, was there no camels in the days? So I'm talking about the wilderness, the desert. And he says, what shall I do? He's understood the death snake to him. Nothing else. He's finished. He's, Allah has given an example here. He's lost everything. Desperate. So Allah says, I'm so happy with that man. That right to the ultimate climax, Allah has given the example here. And then suddenly he's given up. He's lost hope. He opens his eyes and his camels back there in front of him. The camels back there in front of him. Allah says, I'm so happy, so happy on the sinful person. And it's Ramadan. And he's been given Ramadan for just for this purpose. That the people who are stray people like me who are sinful, they go and they pray. And they request Allah for repentance. Allah says, I'm so happy with this tawbah. That the whole 30 days, Allah says, I've made them beloved for this reason. The Quran, you can read after Ramadan. The 20 regards. You can, you can pray salah after Ramadan. This is no special action we're doing in Ramadan. Ramadan was given for this special purpose. Allah says, I want to drag and pull in the sinful person that I can bring them under my mercy. That's why I put the first third of Ramadan, mercy, Rama. I will surround them with my mercy. Like, for example, when you go, you throw a seed, you throw an attraction, and then you'll grab that animal. So Allah Ta'ala has put the seed of mercy upon the sinful people like me and us. Allah says, these sinful people, let's pull them in. Allah drew them in, then Allah drew them towards maghfirah, the second third, Allah prepared them. Allah, our hearts were made soft with rewards and fasting and Quran. Allah softened the hearts. Allah said, I surrounded them with mercy, then He drew us in, pulled us in so that we can ask Allah for forgiveness. Then after forgiveness, Allah did another action. Subhanallah. Allah said, I will give you such nights, subhanallah, such nights I will descend. Then those nights, my rahma, extreme raining down of my mercy in those nights. And Allah says, I'll pull them to the corners, subhanallah. And I won't keep them in the wells, Allah said. In the world. Imagine Allah's plan, how Allah catches us in Ramadan. Allah says, you won't be in the world, in the earth. Your mind won't go to dunya. They won't be in the world. They won't ever desire for the world. Allah says, take them, drag them in, pull them in into the darkness and seal them into where? Into itikaf. Those people are doing itikaf, alhamdulillah. This is the meaning of itikaf. Allah Ta'ala pull them in. There will be no taste for the dunya, no desire for the dunya. They will become strong. That in front of them will be just once if that person Allah says, I just want that servant of mine from the depths of his heart, not from his mouth. He says, Allah, my Rabb, forgive me. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, what will I give that servant of mine who requests this? Then Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr is wajib on that person I'll give to him. You understand what I'm saying? That's the result. So this is Laylatul Qadr. What else is it telling me? What else is Laylatul Qadr? That what does Allah want from us? Why is Allah making keeping us awake and alert to read the Qadr? Yes, what does Allah want from us in the Masjid? Allah wants that my servant, that me and my servant make up. We make up. When he comes to me, that he should make up me so much that I look at him with love. Irjeel, Arabikab, Radiya, Tamardiya. That I am happy with him and my servant is happy with me. That's why Allah gave us Ramadan. But if we don't do this action itself at all, we do all other worship. Allah says that this person is wretched after praying so much salah, after reciting so much Quran. It's announced he's wretched, he's cursed, he hasn't done tawbah to me. His sins are still stuck to his body. They haven't come out of his life. Because you can only clean your sins with one action, with no other action with what is that? Tawbah, repentance. Repentance. Ya ayyuladheena amanu tubu ila illahi tawbah the nasu. Asa rabbakum Allah says. Yes. Allah says, asa rabbakum. Allah is showing His power. I'm your Rabb. I'm your Lord. When your tongue moves, how? When your heart shakes. When your heart shakes, Allah forgive me. Allah forgive me. Immediately Allah gives an announcement. Asa rabbakum Allah says. That sayyatikum, that go, I've forgiven all your sins and I've wiped them away. Not just forgiven, I've wiped your sins away. The earth that you did the sins on, they've evaporated. Not one square inch particle is there witness to of your sins after you've done tawbah. Otherwise, there'll be so many, many witnesses against our sins that we won't be saved in the hereafter. So these words, the environment where you stood, the earth, the, the, all the creatures, the plants, everything, they will say, Allah, He stood there, He was disrespectful to you. Allah, He did this in here. All will become alive in the hereafter. And with a loud voice, they will say, this man, this man, He did this in, He did this in. To this extent, our body that we think is ours, our ruh, our soul, our organs will say, Allah, He's wretched. He used to eat your food. He used to take your namas. Allah, He used to do haram. And this same man he used to commit sins. And Allah, you look all the way around you. But here Allah is saying here, Sayyatikum. Allah says, I will wipe away all the witnesses of your sins. Say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Imagine, Wa yudkhulum jannata. 
tahdil anhar suddenly Allah will announce this the person who's drowned in the sins who did tawbah with his heart Allah says I'll open the doors of paradise for you I'm not saying this Quran is saying this yudkhulum jannah I'm not saying anything from my own side. Whose reward is this? This is the reward for that person for which we were given Ramadan, for which Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ameen. So those decisions we got in our hands, my friends, do you want to get Ramadan? Do one action, what is that? Tawbah, repent. That's it, end of story. Otherwise, if you want to be wretched and cursed, do whatever you want in Ramadan. But if you don't do Tawbah, if you don't repent, then no deed will save you. Why? This is the law of Allah. Principle of Allah, do what you want. You, Allah can forgive who He wants. Allah says, only forgive that person in Ramadan. 30 days I gave to him. What should he do? Tawbah. Repent. So Tawbah now. Repentance. Very easy. In your heart, you must say, say, I'll do a few things. What is that? Just three things you have to do in your heart. And I'm talking about the definition of Tawbah and Nasuha. Tawbah and Nasuha. What is Tawbah and Nasuha? What do we have to say? In your heart, talk to yourself. Not with your mouth. Tawbah, Tawbah, Tawbah. Say, Allah... Oh, such a regret you should have. Oh, Allah, Rabbi Kareem, I was so wretched. I was so backward. Allah, look towards your sins. Allah, did this sin. Allah, did this oppression. Allah, did this as well. With a light regret, just a very slight remorse. Not too much. It doesn't, maybe a tear doesn't come. Yes, if a tear comes, then that's a massive valuable treasure that that tear is so precious that it will extinguish all of the fire in hell. That's the power inside the human being. That's the connection he has with his Lord. So much connection, me and you. This is not a minor thing. 88 places in the Quran, Allah says, Ya ayyuhaladina manu, oh you who believe, you and me, Allah has spoken to us 88 places in the Quran. With every believer, the most sinful of sinful of believers, Allah says, Ya ayyuhaladina manu, in the Quran, Allah is addressing you and me, to me. 88 times Allah has addressed me and you in the Quran. Tell me, if 88 times your Lord Creator says to you, leave this and do tawbah, and you've not obeyed Him, and in Ramadan you've not listened to Him. 15 times you completed Quran, recited in Ramadan, someone 25 times recited Quran, somebody 17 times, 88 multiplied on that Quran that you recited. Allah is addressing you with one question, Tawbu illallahi wa tawbah the nusra, that do tawbah, true tawbah, do it. Do you understand what I'm saying or you don't understand what I'm saying? That's the point to understand. Think about it. Think about what I'm saying. Then what should we do? Biggest action. Never think that I don't need to do tawbah. Never think. It's number one. Because shaitan, he attacks with his nets and traps. And deception that this man, he's going. He's understood the purpose of life. Shaitan doesn't like that. So the first waswasai the shaitan puts in your heart is, you don't need to do tawbah, you pray salah, you're pious, you're good. So, and he makes you think, I've got no sins. He puts the parda, the veil, because he has the traps and the nets. He will put the veils on your sins, shaitan. He won't let you feel that you are a sinful person. Rather though, despite the fact there's no kutub, no ghost, no abdal, no wali Allah, every wali Allah who became a wali Allah, and in the hereafter, what would they will say from their tongues is, Allah forgive me, Allah forgive me, Allah please, Allah makfirli, Allah makfirli, Allah makfirli. The biggest wali Allah who passed in this world, just one word he said when he departed from the world, Allah forgive me, Allah forgive me, Allah makfirli. So this is a big veil shaitan puts in front of you that you haven't done any sin, you've just done a hajj, you are a scholar, You've got high maqam, you are Hazrat Sheikh, you've got students, you're pious, there's people who run after you, you're a Shaykh al Hadith, you've knowledge of Hadith, you've written so many books, you're pious. Hazrat Tanwi Sab, who wrote as many kitabs as him? But look at his condition, Hazrat Tanwi Sab. Did anyone write more books than him? And he said that I am a spider, I'm the worst from all people, he said. And he said that I'm worst, I think I'm even lower than the person who doesn't have Iman, he said. He, because he had the awareness of the sin. When a person's aware of his sin, then he does tawbah and repents. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the veils that we put in front of us, no, you're pious, no. You must pull those veils down and we must pull ourselves together and say, I'm a sinful person, have regret and remorse, that all of this is due to me. So first bring regret, remorse, have proper regret on your life. Then after that, 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with your tawfiq, with the ability you've given me today, with this ability and capacity you've given to me, I will try my best that in my life I won't let this sin come back to me. Then shaitan will come. Oh, you stupid person, don't say that. Don't promise to Allah you'll not sin again. You'll get stuck and then Allah will grab you and then you'll break the tawbah. Then Allah's rahmah mercy gives the answer that you can carry on sinning after and I will continue to forgive you ongoing. Just raise your hands now though, now. Allah says, is this not the case? So this is the tussle. This is the clash with shaitan. Allah says, today do tawbah, repent. Ramadan, you will learn it now, stupid person. When you sin after again, then ask for forgiveness again. I'll forgive you again. How many times? Allah says, you carry on sinning and you get tired, but your Rabb Allah will never get tired of forgiving you. Subhanallah. Very easy. At least do tawbah in Ramadan. Repent in Ramadan. At least, okay, at least make the intention. That, okay, I'll just do tawbah for Ramadan. That's it. Then Allah's mercy will come to you after as well. He will help you after. So two things. And the third point, be brave, courageous. After today, I will eliminate this sin. End of story. Finish. Three things you said in your heart. You've done tawbah and usua. Immediately Allah will respond. Say, Ya Tukum, all your sins are forgiven. Yudkulum jannata. Tahti Allah nahar. Allah says, Immerse yourself in paradise. Enjoy the luxuries. Palaces are waiting for you. Your whores are waiting for your wives. There's waiting for you. The while you're in the world, it's waiting for you. Very short times left in dunya. Allah says, I've completed your file in Ramadan. Very soon you will come back to me and you will see the rewards of your tawbah in the hereafter. My brothers, my colleagues, think, 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 ponder, contemplate, do tawbah. Nothing will you lose by doing tawbah. Nothing you will lose. You will commit a sin again, no worries. After Ramadan, if a sin happens, let it happen. But at least in Ramadan now, while you're here, here and now, at least get Ramadan, embrace it now. So the biggest action we will need to do today, because Laylatul Qadr will be waiting for you. Every night of yours will become Laylatul Qadr if in that night you do tawbah. Repent. Allah will make that night Laylatul Qadr because you've attained that point. So today's this gathering, two things that came. Allah enabled me to speak from my tongue. I'll repeat that, summarize that, revise so you can revise the lesson. First, I spoke about dhikrullah, great hadith I shared with you. That those who do dhikr will enter into paradise without reckoning those who do dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah in this world. Whilst they're alive. I told you this hadith in the beginning, didn't I? Without reckoning, without hisab, that Listen, you're listening easily today, but tomorrow you will realize that what a great reward that without hisab you're entering into paradise just due to one point because you brought dhikr practice into your life physically. This is the point. Point number one that was, and point number two is that if you want to earn Ramadan, then do tawbah, repent now. Definitely everyone has a need. Everyone is urgently in need of tawbah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah Mumtana said, Ya Ayu Nabi, Ida Jaqal Mu'minat, that those believing women, the whole verse Allah revealed about tawbah. And Allah formulated the method, the best tawbah is that you go to a pious person, a teacher, and make him witness your tawbah. Ya Ayu Nabi, the Prophet ﷺ was told in Surah Mamtan, Allah said, Oh my, my Prophet, when the believing women come to you, tell them what? Salah and, and namaz? No, teach them Mu'minat, they are believing women. They are great women already, I'm sending them to you. What should you do? You buy Yunuka, accept their tawbah, their pledge of allegiance, their pledge of tawbah, repentance. How? That that make them give promises, I'll pray salah, I'll observe parda, won't commit sins. This was the way that the shaykh, when he gives tawbah, uh, and, uh, the bayah to the students, this is tawbah. So why does a student go to the shaykh? According to this verse of the Quran, he says, I'll make the wali a witness. When the witness, uh, he witnesses my action of tawbah, because Allah has told us the tariqah, the go to my friend, wali at that time, the Prophet ﷺ was alive, that's why the believing men and women went to him for tawbah. And this proceeds will continue till Qiyamah. So the Mashaik do this now. When you knock on the door, he said, why have you come for this and this? There's no happiness. When the student says, I want to do tawbah, immediately the shaykh will embrace you. For this reason, that Allah says, I've sent this servant of mine to the wali to do tawbah, to repent. Some the people pick up their shoes. Why? Oh, because I'm sinful. I've just done zina, adultery. Hazrat sahab, please, I want to do tawbah. I'm telling you stories of people. And he runs after him, that come here, mad person, that I will pick up your shoes. Why? Because you are Allah's guest, Allah sent you to my company so you can do tawbah. Yes, you are very honored, respected Allah sending you sinful person to me. Allah sent you to me to do tawbah. You understand what I'm saying? 
So make a knee and tension that you can find a wali Allah shaykh. Yes sir, why have you come? I haven't come for taweez, I haven't come for dunya. I've come for that purpose that Allah Ta'ala has ordered me that go to my wali. So say it loudly and confidently. And the wali Allah will immediately will submit himself to you. Oh, okay, I'll enable you, I'll help you to do tawbah. So he'll enable you to do tawbah, he will introduce you to Allah, and he will teach you dhikr Allah at the same time. Then... He will develop you and teach you and give you islah and improvement and reformation because that's the duty of the wali Allah to help the student. It's not easy to be a sheikh, my friends. It's, it's not easy. There's no flesh on the bone after that. It's very difficult. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, to be a sheikh is the most difficult task because the real deputy of the Prophet ﷺ are the friends of Allah, the mashayikh. They're doing, yeah, why you allim hum al kitaba wal hikmata, why you zakki him. They're the free functions of the Prophet ﷺ. He brought the kitab, sharia, and tazkiya, he purified the hearts of, so the sheikh does all three actions as well, the three functions of the Prophet ﷺ. The mashayikh do that. He runs with the Quran. He runs alongside with the Qur'an, he follows the Sharia, he'll revive the son of the Prophet ﷺ, and third, he does tazkiyah to his students, to his murids, tazkiyah, purification. So go, look, and with the name of Allah, seek a shaykh, look for a teacher, before it's evening, arrive to his company, the Hazrat, enable me, help me to do tawbah, within a second, all the rewards of the hereafter you will attain. All the rewards. Will you do this? Inshallah, yes. That's it. Then see the result. Otherwise Ramadan's gone. And you keep, everything will evaporate, all your deeds. If you don't do this well action, and everyone is sinful. Everyone has to do this action. Me and you will have to do this. Today you have to do tawbah. True tawbah. May Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq. Ameen. Okay, let's do a dhikr now for a short while. Remembrance of Allah. Let's. Bismillah ar-Rahman if you have the mood of doing dhikr, do dhikr loudly. And if you feel the fast, then do fast uh, dhikr silently. Which dhikr do you want to do? If mashallah, you will say something verbally and you will be happy, we can do dhikr jahil loudly. We have two choices. If you want to be lazy, we can do silent dhikr as well. So those who want to do dhikr jahil loudly, put your hands up. If you want to do loud dhikr, you'll have to ask. It's a great method, yeah? Okay, there are more people who want to do dhikr jahil, so we'll do loud dhikr inshallah. Recite the ruchri. Yes, so come closer, then you'll inshallah join, uh, enjoy the dhikr. We'll recite together. They are beautiful kalamat, you'll enjoy these verses, the statements. So read with a loud voice, rejoice, Allah's mercy, recite these kalamat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen As-Salaatu Wassalamu Ala Sayyid Al-Musaleem Shabiyyu Al-Mazlumin Ta'awa Yaseen Al-Habib Al-Ameen Allahumma Salli Ala Sayyid Al-Mawla Muhammad Al-Nabi Nubi Wa'azwaji Ma'afi Al-Mu'mineen Wa'zulliyyatihi Wa'alabatihi Wa'ma Salli Ta'ala Ibrahim Inna Ka'umid Al-Majid وَسَلِّمْ تَسْلِيمًا دَائِمًا نَوَدًا قَسِيرًا 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 اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وظلمنا وحزننا وجدنا وخطنا وعملنا كل ذلك لنا لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم يا متيك نستعين ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الاخرة يسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ ذيكنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب يا قاضي الحاجات اكت حاجاتنا يا دافي البليات اتفى بلياتنا يا شافي النمرات اشفى بلادنا اللهم فينا في بدني اللهم فينا في سمي اللهم فينا في بصري لا إله إلا أنت ربنا حبلنا من نزواجنا وزورياتنا قرة أيا وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم رمّل همهما كما رمّياني سيئا اللهم رمّل همهما كما رمّياني سيئا 
சகீரா அல்லஹும் ரபிர்ஹும் ஹுமா குமாரப் பயானி சகீரா வசல்லல்லாஹு தஆலா லா ஹைர் ஹல்கஹி நூரே அர்ஷஹி ஜீனத் ஃபர்ஷஹி வாலி அஸ்வாபி அஜ்மாயின் வலமதிகையாரமீன்